You are now entering a techie zone. Well, I'm bound to get myself in trouble with this video, but today we're going to be doing a comparison between the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 and the iPad Mini because I feel these are the two best mini tablets that are out there in the market based on my personal opinion. Uh, just as a disclaimer, because I know that this is going to cause a whole bunch of issues and this is going to open up a whole can of worms, I already know it, so I'm basically ready for it. Um, I have used both of these tablets and I'm going to give you my honest views on what I like and don't like about them because there are things I do like and don't like about um, each of these products and I will try to do an unbiased opinion uh, review on, no, not really a view, but a comparison between these two because I feel these are the two best that are out there in the industry. First off, before we get to the actual product, let's um, take a look at the actual boxes. First off, we have here, this is the tab box, and we have right over, well down here, over here, we have the iPad box. Let's just compare the uh, box is here just for a minute. This is the box for the iPad. Now, the, now, my iPad mini is the iPad 1, the first generation iPad. Apple is still selling it, as you can see right um, here. They're still selling it as of the date of making this video in May of 2015. They are still selling the first generation iPad. Um, but just keep that in mind if you are watching this. Um, you know months or years from now that this may no longer be available so uh, just keep that in mind but this is the first generation iPad mini and here's the box here uh, just has a picture of again this is just typical Apple packaging you can see it's got a picture of the machine or the tablet there just iPad mini on both sides on the top and the bottom we've got Apple logos and then on the back is all of our information this is a um, 16 gigabyte model and uh, it is a Wi-Fi and ooh there it goes Wi-Fi uh, only model and it's 16 gigs in silver white uh, Apple calls this model the silver white color because it's got a white uh, glass front panel and the back of it is silver just like that it's technically aluminum but you know this is um, I love the white color because it just matches that aluminum look so that's the iPad box the Galaxy Tab box is more um, I'd say more is going on as you can see here on the front I've got a picture of the uh, tablet itself it says Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 it's an 8 inch model with a super clear LCD Wi-Fi 16 gig both of these are um, Wi-Fi only 16 gig models um, on this side it's got a bunch of you know 100% post-consumer recycled paper all that fun stuff on that side then on the top it's got a little label that you kinda have to break uh, in order to open the box and then on the back here it talks about all this fun stuff more of the um, specs on the side here on the uh, back it's an 8 inch uh, super LCD 1.5 gigahertz dual core CPU I believe the iPad mini also has a dual core CPU I believe it is uh, actually powered by a um, A5 chip I believe in fact let's take a look at that right here uh, yes it is an A5 chip the iPad mini the iPad mini 1 is powered by an A5 chip which I believe is dual core or single core <laughs> 7.9 inch uh, display um, it originally came pre-installed with iOS 7, but it, you know they all come with 8 now. EyeSight camera, all that fun stuff. The resolution is 1024 by 768 on the first generation. On the um, Retina iPad Mini, it's actually more. Uh, the resolution, it's not really more resolution. You get the same screen real estate, but it's like pixel doubling. Um, really, that's kind of like what it is. Uh, let's see, one and a half gigabytes of RAM compared to the iPad Minis, I believe 512. Um, full HD 1080p playback and HD recording uh, Android on it of course Universal blah 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 and all that fun stuff so this is just the box there and of course all that stuff on the uh, bottom the uh, model number so again the box is more the uh, Samsung box is more typical of what you would find in the industry and the Apple box is just you know typical Apple packaging very minimalist simple um, you know, I don't know why Apple finds, you know, their packages are more simplistic, but there it is for you. 
So, let's go ahead and wake these things up from sleep. Here we have the iPad in the Galaxy. And on my iPad I have a passcode, so I have to enter that. Oops. Oh, come on. There it is. And uh, so here we have the home screens of iOS. Again, pretty standard. And of Android. This is actually running, this uh, Galaxy Tab is actually running Android 4.4.2 KitKat. Um, the update was released for all um, Samsung. I think most Samsung devices received KitKat. This is not yet running Android Lollipop. I don't know if they're going to bring Lollipop over to this or not. Um, I haven't heard anything about it yet, so I don't know if they're going to. But this originally, if you were to buy it brand new, I think it would still come with 4.2 Jelly Bean. So just keep that in mind. You probably will have a software update for 4.4.2, which is going to be KitKat, which is the newest version that this runs so far. And again, I'm not positive if this is going to receive Lollipop or not. Uh, they're still selling this, too. Um, in fact, I go over here. See, right on Samsung's website, they still... Have it. You can still buy these brand new. Uh, Galaxy Tab 8.8 inch. Uh, 8. Dot, uh, 8 inch. Uh, it's been changed a little bit. It looks like it's got some um, dual cameras up there. I don't know what those are. Maybe one's a camera, one's a sensor. I really don't know. Uh, this one only has one at the top, which is the camera, which is right. Ooh, can't really see it, but it's kind of like right up in there. There's a camera up there. So they've kind of changed it a little bit, but still, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, typical with all Samsung devices, this the uh, Samsung Galaxy is running uh, Android is running uh, Samsung's TouchWiz interface, which uh, this is the way it looks. Uh, stock Android looks a little similar to this, but to me, if you flip through the pages here, you can see you got all these. This is more of Samsung's design. This TouchWiz interface, um, it's received a lot of criticism from people and. I like and don't like it. There are some things that I do like about it. There are some things I don't like about it. Um, but like, like this Flipboard thing, this is one that I, again, personal opinion, this Flipboard thing, I don't quite get what this is supposed to be about. I don't quite get this. I just feel that makes the home screen a little cluttered. Um, but that's my personal opinion, and I'm sure people like that, but I personally don't. Um, so, you know, there's some things I do love and hate about it. And same way with the iOS home screen, there's some things that I uh, do like and hate about it. Um, like, for example, here, um, you know, it's just, you know, you've got all the apps. And one thing I do like about this is you have weather right here on the top of your home screen compared to here where you just have your apps, where if you want weather, you have to uh, download an app. And iPads do not come with Apple's standard iOS weather app. I don't know why. For some reason, Apple feels that isn't important and you don't need it. So you don't get the weather app with iOS on iPads. So you have to download a uh, app for that. But if we do another feature thing here, we both systems have the fame notification center. And you can see here, this is the iOS version. And one thing I do like is they have integrated weather right into Notification Center with iOS 7. So you really don't need that weather app, but still, you know, I still recommended that you do. And then, of course, you got all your widgets here that was um, introduced with iOS 8. And then your Notification tab. Click back and you can tap back and forth between them. And then here, it all is up here on uh, the Galaxy tab, you actually have a list of buttons. This actually is, um, you get a list of buttons here to turn Wi-Fi on or off, the location services to mute the volume, to lock the screen rotation, turn Bluetooth on and off, and reading mode. Reading mode, I think, is supposed to enhance the text. Uh, it's supposed to make the text a little bit more clear for if you like reading a book or something. You also got display brightness and auto display brightness based on the automatic sensor your display, and down there at the bottom it tells you your Wi-Fi connection. If you're connected to a Wi-Fi network, it tells you that. Uh, Apple's version of that is Control Center, and on Control Center in iOS, all you do is just swipe up from the bottom, and you have Control Center. And Control Center has Next Play and uh, Previous for iTunes, as well as your volume control. You can turn AirDrop on or off through this button, right, through that button right there. You can turn it on and off. You've got airplane mode, which turns off all wireless. 
if this and then you've got uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, that's um, uh, do not disturb so you can turn off do not disturb for uh, notifications and you also have orientation lock you can lock the orientation as well as screen brightness and you can also access your camera through here and a timer if you want a uh, timer you can do that also what I just showed that is kind of that's Apple's version of app switching double tap on home and you kinda get into this uh, view here so for example if I open up um, let's say the App Store and if I want to switch back to any other open apps I just double tap home and I can do that I can do the same thing over here on the uh, tab as well I'll open up Let's see I'll just open up the world clock and instead of double tapping I take the home button and I hold it and it takes us into something very similar which is technically this is technically called app switching technically that's technically what this is and if you want to close out of an app all you do on iOS is swipe up and on Android at least on the um, uh, tab here you just swipe to the right and it will take you right back to your home screen just like that um, at the top, we both have uh, this thing here. It talks about iPad and your Wi-Fi signal. I have a timer set on here. Also, your Wi-Fi and um, battery, your uh, Bluetooth and battery. Up here, um, any um, alerts will show up up here on the left side. And on the right, you have Bluetooth, wireless, battery, and time. So you notice the time on iOS is in the middle. The time over here is on the right. Take your pick, whatever one you like. <laughs> Um, on the uh, home screen, on the tab, you have a little Google bar here, so you can actually type a search in here. You can actually type in a bunch of things. For example, if I type in, um, let's see, Sony, it will type in Sony, and then it'll give us a quick Google search here of uh, Sony. On um, iOS, we do not have that option, so on the iPad, we don't have that option. You actually have to physically go to Google. Uh, in order to do that. Uh, let's see, what else can we talk about? Um, these buttons down here are kind of control buttons. It's typical for Android devices. This kind of gives you like a right menu, gives you a bunch of different things, and this is your back button. Uh, that'll take you back between pages and stuff. Now let's talk about voice assistants. Both of these tablets have a built-in voice assistant. The iPad has Siri, and the uh, Tab 3 has S Voice. Now it's a little bit interesting how you get into this because as I showed you with app switching on iOS you double tap the home button to get into app switching and then with the tab 3 you hold the home button in to get into app switching. To get into the voice assistant it actually works the other way around. So to get into the voice so in order to get into Siri on the iPad you hold the home button in and to get into S Voice on the uh, Tab 3, you double tap the home button. So let's actually start off with Siri first. So let's go ahead and start off with Siri and let's uh, search for something. Find pizza. Looking. Okay, Dakota, here is what I found. And you can see it gives us a list of all the pizza places that are near my current location which is at home so you can do things like that Siri you can also um, if you want to search for something else you can hit that microphone button down there and it will um, and you can search for something else you can also search for sports scores um, look up weather cool little things like that you can also do the same thing on the uh, tab three here using S voice. Let's go ahead and get into S voice and let's do the same thing. Find pizza. Here's a list of places I found. And you can see the voice feedback is a little bit interesting. The um, voice on S voice is a little bit different compared to Siri. Um, Siri's voice sounds a little bit more realistic compared to S voice, which sounds a little bit robotic. <laughs> you know, that's just my personal opinion. So both of them have voice. And again, with S voice, you can do pretty much the same thing. Search for weather. Actually, I think S voice is a little bit more useful because S voice, I think you can set timers 
and things like that, where Siri's a little bit more limited. Siri's more for searching for something rather than it is doing things. I think that's one of the main selling points between S-Voice and Siri is S-Voice does a lot of commands and things like that, where Siri's more for searching. I think that's kind of where the two are kind of a little bit different, but they're both voices. Okay, so sorry that ended a little abruptly there. Um, always make sure you empty your memory card before you start a video, because <laughs> I ultimately found that out. Um, the camera had stopped recording because um, the memory card was full. I didn't empty it before I started, so... Uh, blooper moment, but anyway, we're back here. We just finished talking about Siri and S-Voice. Um, one thing I forgot to mention about Siri and S-Voice is you actually can do a voice command to get it to activate. Um, with um, iOS, you can say, hey Siri, and it will automatically activate um, Siri for you. But that only works if it's plugged in, which is kind of useless. Uh, because I think it's more useless on the iPhone to say, hey Siri. Because who in the world uses their iPhone plugged in? I mean, the only time you plug it in is when you go to bed. <laughs> I mean, really. So I think Hey Siri when it's plugged in is a little useless. I guess that's to prevent Siri from being activated during normal use, but I don't know. I don't know if it works the same, because I know that you can do the same thing with the tab through. You can say Hey Galaxy or uh, Hey Google, and it will um, activate. But I think it needs to be plugged in in order for it to activate. I know it does on iOS. I'm not sure on Android. Somebody can, because I'm sure I'm going to get about... 2,800 comments saying that yes it will or no it won't. Uh, so I'm sure somebody will give me the answer to that in the comments because whoa, because I don't know if it does um, or not. If it needs to be plugged in on Android. But I know for iOS it needs to be plugged into a power source in order for it to, um, to do that. So anyway, that is um, voice commands. The overall apps are a little bit different as well. Uh, the App Store, of course, on iOS, you have the famed App Store. Oh, well, you have the fame, um, there we go, App Store. And then on the um, tab three, we have the Google Play Store. One difference between these two stores is Apple is the um, iOS App Store is um, regulated where the Play Store really isn't. The uh, And I'm sure a lot of people know this, but the Android Marketplace is not really regulated a whole lot. Um, one thing about Android that I think a lot of people like is you could root these things and nobody has a care in the world. Um, Samsung doesn't care, Google doesn't care if you root these things and do modifications to these things. You could, because if you're not a fan of TouchWiz, you could actually root full stock Android uh, onto these devices and nobody cares. Um, as with iOS, it's a different story. If you jailbreak these to do hacks and tweaks, it probably, I think it voids your warranty. Um, I'm almost certain that it will, if you have Apple Care, if you bought Apple Care with your iOS device, I'm almost certain it voids your warranty. And Apple has bent over backwards trying to fix exploits that the jailbreak utilities use to try to figure out how you did it and, uh, you know, fix the exploits so you can't jailbreak. But generally, Every version of iOS basically gets jailbroken at some point. Um, you know, the jailbreak teams always come up with one. So, you know, you can patch all the exploits, but there's always ways to get around it. The collection of apps will vary. Sometimes you'll have the same app. Sometimes you don't. Um, stock apps that you get with iOS are typical iLife and iWork, which means that you get GarageBand, iMovie, and uh, Keynote numbers and pages free with all new iOS devices. You don't really get the same thing for iOS. You don't really get the same thing for Android. Um, at least with this particular tablet that you don't. You do get Google Drive. So um, if you're a Google Drive user, you can use that. I don't think it's editing, though. I think it's just uploading documents. I don't know. I don't have a Google Drive account. So I can't really tell you what that does. But, um, yeah, you do get stock apps. I find that um, Android devices, especially the Tab 3, comes with a lot of useless apps that you probably will never use. Like, for example, um, Chat On, something that you'll probably never use. Group Play, something you'll probably never use. Um, it just comes with a bunch of stuff that you'll probably just never in your life use. Uh, so, you know, same way with iOS. You know, iOS has that stuff that you'll never use. Like... Tips, newsstand, 
um, you know, video is something I don't use. Um, you know, it's just stuff that you don't use. That's that's that's, that's just on there. It's just stock stuff. Um, so you do get stock apps, some of it more useful than others on uh, both devices. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the features of both of these. We'll put it into sleep. Let's take a look at the iPad first. On the iPad here, actually, we will move this. These are cool little stands, by the way, that I picked up. Um, these are only two bucks at a local uh, store. They're actually quite useful. Um, they can be adjusted in all different positions. They're really quite nice. I picked up two of them, one for each tablet. So, um, Here we have the iPad mini here. We have the front-facing eyesight camera in the front. Got the home button. Around the left side here, there's absolutely nothing to look at on the left side. On the top, we have microphone and headphone jack, as well as the sleep-wake switch. On the right side, we have the mute switch, which is actually gone on the um, current iPads. I don't think the iPad, the current iPad mini has the mute switch either. And you got volume buttons on the side. On the bottom, we have your lightning port. Um, as you probably know, lightning has been Apple's standard um, connector since iPhone 5. And it brought up quite a ruckus since lightning busted compatibility with basically every single accessory that was ever designed for um, iOS devices. But now since we're in 2015, there's been a plethora of devices that are now using Lightning. And you've got your dual speakers down here as well. On the back, we just got Apple logo, iPad, all that stuff, and you got your rear-facing camera back there. So again, it's a very simplistic design, very similar to the MacBook Pro, where there's very little ports and just, you know, it, Basically, with Apple design nature is if it doesn't need to be there, it's not there. Uh, same um, on the Galaxy Tab here. There's a little bit more going on here. We have here on the left-hand side, we have an SD card slot. This is what I like about this particular tablet and something that I wish Apple would adopt, but they never will, is this micro SD card slot. There's actually, if I remember, there's an SD card in there. I think there's a one gig um, SD card in there that I stuck in there. So, giving this tablet a whopping 17 gigabytes of storage, because I think it's only one gig. But this is a um, cool feature that I wish Apple would adopt, but they probably never will. The micro SD card slot, you can expand the internal storage. I think this can take up to 32 gigs, so you can expand that storage. You also have at the top here, headphone jack, nothing else on the left side. On the top, headphone jack. On the right hand side here, we have volume buttons. Actually, no mute switch, you just have a volume buttons. You actually have the volume button there and the sleep-wake button right there. This is something interesting. This is an IR sensor, and this is really cool. This actually works as a television remote. This is really cool. I first found this out after I first got this tablet, and I'm like, oh my god, that is so cool. This actually works as a television remote, and... Um, it, and I'm going to see if it still works. I think it still does. I'm going to try to demonstrate that for you because it's really, really cool the way this works. It's really awesome. And then on the bottom, we have just your standard um, mini uh, USB. This is actually a, a mini USB port, so it'll work with a plethora of different devices that use mini USB. And you've got dual speakers down here as well. Okay, let's see. What else can we talk about both of these tablets? Um, let's talk about the cameras. Let's go ahead and open up the iOS camera first. The iOS camera is actually exceptionally good. I know you probably can't tell on the video, but it is exceptionally good. The um, iPad mini takes incredible good photos. Unfortunately, you know, when you zoom in, you know, it gets absolutely crappy because again, there's no optical zoom. And this is a problem with nearly almost every single mobile device, whether it be a phone or a tablet, they don't have optical zoom. Um, so, you know, if you try zooming in, it's just going to be absolutely horrid. So, um, you know, don't use the zoom. So it's horrid, but when you're not zooming in, it's really crystal clear. So I mean, with the video mode, I'll go switch into video mode. And I know it's going to be a little difficult to tell, but still, the video mode is still exceptionally good. There really is no grain when you uh, shoot videos with these. It's really crystal clear. It shoots in 720p. It actually shoots... I think in either, in either 720p HD or 
um, 1080p HD. We can also do the front-facing camera by hitting this button here, and it will take us into the front-facing camera. There we are. You can see me in the Galaxy, and you can see me in the uh, Sony Handycam. I think the Sony Handycam makes the um, picture quality look a little bit better. Um, it looks a little bit more brighter on the monitor of the Handycam than it does on the iPad itself. But um, that is that. You can zoom right in on that. Uh, so again, you know, it's still exceptionally, you know, it's still pretty, pretty good. Um, that's in video mode, and then we'll switch it back to picture mode. And again, it's still exceptionally, exceptionally good. So, um, you know, it's a really good camera. You also got a timer up here if you want to do a self-timer. So you can do that. Let's take a look at the Galaxy camera. The Galaxy camera to me is a little bit um, grainy, in my opinion. Um, you can see it's not as bright, I don't think. Um, oops, and I just snapped a picture. <laughs> but um, let's go back into camera mode. As you can see, I think it's a little bit more grainy. There, I mean, it's not as bright. I mean, still, the camera is really good. I mean, still, the camera is really nice. But I think it's not as bright as the iPad camera. And video mode, um, I've shot a video or two with it, and I don't think it shoots in HD because um, I think I, I think it only shoots in 480p when you're in video mode. I don't think it does HD because um, I've shot a video with it once before and it wasn't HD. So uh, maybe there's some setting that I don't have on for that. But still, both cameras are exceptionally good. Flip this button, it'll take us to the front-facing camera and. This is the front-facing camera. It's um, actually not all that great. It's actually got lag in it. You can kind of see it on the video. It is not the Handycam. It is actually the video. It's got some lag in it. Um, the contrast is not all that great. The color is not all that great. So the front-facing camera is um, pooey on the uh, Tab 3. It's not all that great. I mean, it's still, I mean, it's serviceable. I mean, it'll, I mean, you know, it'll get the job done for the quick selfie, but um, uh, the iOS camera still the front facing camera I mean look at the difference the front facing camera on iOS is on the iPad is much better it's brighter it's crisper the color is better um, the front facing camera is poo poo on the um, I, I don't know if it's poo poo but it's it, it's got lag you can definitely tell it's got lag in it and this is the iOS camera again you know, it's you know, it's a little bit difficult to tell over a video, but in person, there's a substantial difference um, between the two cameras. Actually, the rear-facing camera on the um, Galaxy Tab isn't all that bad. The front-facing camera is not all that great. So um, it'll get the occasional selfie done, but I don't know about anything else. So that's all I've got to say about that. Um, both of these have Bluetooth. They can sync up to anything, whether it be a phone or a computer in this case. Um, let's see, what else? Web browsers. Um, there is a version of Firefox. I use Firefox for this. Um, this, the um, tab comes pre-installed with Google Chrome. Um, so I use Firefox on this. And of course, on the iPad, you get Apple Standard uh, Safari. Um, I just use Firefox on this. There is a version of Firefox that is coming to iOS here very, very soon. So if you're a Firefox junkie, then you'll be able to download Firefox for iOS pretty soon. I don't know when it's coming out, but they are working on it. Uh, hmm, I didn't even notice. I'm on the UK version of this site. <laughs> I didn't even notice. I don't live in the UK, though. Um, for some reason, I ended up on the UK site. I, I, I didn't even notice that. 249 pounds. I didn't even notice that. Hmm. So, no. If you watch the earlier section of this video when I showed this off, I don't live in the UK. I live in the USA. Uh, so, <laughs> I don't know how I got it. I, I, I don't know. Maybe they're not selling this in the US anymore. I don't know. Um, I, I did a Google search and this was the top hit. So, maybe they're not selling it in the US anymore. I don't know. Um, but anyway. Um, I think that's pretty much all I've got for you in this video. I don't think there's anything else I can really demonstrate. Oh yeah, I want to show you the um, TV thing. So um, I'm going to pause the recording here for just a second while I get that set up. And uh, hopefully this works. Okay, so let's go ahead and try the uh, cool remote control. Like I showed you, there's an IR sensor on the front. The app that is pre-installed on this is called Smart Remote. I'm going to tap that. 
And now, when you first open this up, you're going to have to configure it. It'll ask you your branded TV, um, cable or satellite box. In this case, I have here Direct TV. I'm going to actually take this remote. You see it here on the couch right there. You see it on the couch. Nowhere to be found. That's the remote. So let's go ahead and hit the power button. And we're going to hit power and power to both. You'll notice they both came on. So let's go ahead and um, hit the done button. And um, actually, let's see what we can do. Let me move this. Um, actually, I don't know how we're going to do this. It's going to be a little interesting. But to control the TV, you take this um, uh, gray pull tab and you pull it out. And you get this little control panel. Let's go ahead and hit the keypad. You get a keypad button. And let's change the channel here to... Let's see, how am I going to do this? This is going to be interesting. But um, let's change it here to... 566, do we even have that channel? Yes. It goes to this. Whatever this is. And um, we can also... Um, hit the back button right here this will cycle through the channels just like that again that button will cycle through the channels I can also do play pause so I can play and pause since I have a DVR it'll play and pause again I can even um, I can mute the TV but I don't think it works from over here let me yeah, you see, it has to be pointed directly at the TV in order for the volume control to work. But still, it's a really cool thing. And then at the end of the day, when we're done, we can just hit the power button and hit power and power. And they both turn off. I don't think there is such a thing for iOS. Because, again, there is no IR sensor on the iPad, so it won't work. But still, it's really cool. So anyway, that's all I've got for you in this video. A little comparison between both the iPad mini first generation and the Galaxy Tab 3. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you want to see more, hit the little subscribe button if you want to see more from the techies world. And thank you for watching. I'm dreaming about the things we used to have, bed that we used to share, memories we used to grab. Dreaming about the days I had with you and all the times you call me just to say, baby, I miss you.